Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, L
government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, in order it and establish it with, with judgment and with justice for the enhancement justice from henceforth, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. The Lord's word is already blessed. Amen. Amen.
and thou shalt call his name. Let me stop and tell you, when I read this, every time I read that, it brings to me somewhat of some expectations, y'all. Mm -hmm. She bring forth a son, thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people yes. from their sins. Keep hope alive, y'all, keep hope. Look at somebody, help me preach. So keep hope alive. Oh, Some of us are playing with that thing. You don't know what they're going through. I said, help me preach, whisper, look at them and say, keep hope alive. Brothers and sisters in Christ this morning, our scripture lesson comes from a very, very, very familiar place as recorded by Matthew as he records the birth of the Christ child. Is that right? Yes. This verse, no doubt, um, especially right now, is one of the most popular verses during the season. Let me remind you, this is a season of hope, a season of restoration, and a season, hopefully for you and me, a season of expectation. But, but, but I want to talk to you, if you, you've been in my mind, you've been uh, in my meditation, definitely you've been in my prayer life, I need to talk to those of you who have been going through, <clears throat> going through trials and sicknesses suffering, bereavement. And, and, and Sister Preacher, Brother Preacher, you don't have to go too far to find those that are going through, but we just can go as far as our churches, right? We have sickness in our church. Unrest still in our country, and in spite of all of the efforts, it seems like there's no hope anywhere. The statement has never been true uh, as it is right now. If, if it's not one thing, it's another. Somebody's with me. Uh, but with all this said, can I charge you this morning, uh, as a Christian, meaning Christ-like, we have a responsibility, a opportunity, and I think Dominic said during his prayer, we have a privilege to yeah. let this world know at all times, but especially during this season, that no matter what you may be going through, no matter what's going on, no matter if you're going through, there's still hope. Y'all yeah. that will help me preach. Uh, uh, hope is defined as a feeling of expectation and, and, and a desire for a certain thing to happen. Uh, biblically speaking, hope is a confident expectation that God will fulfill his promises to us yes. and a sense of trust in Jesus and his saving work. Yeah. And beloved, I don't know about you, but, 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 but don't dismiss the power of hope because we need hope to get a new perspective on our lives. Amen. And if you incorporate hope and engage your faith, you will get some strength. Let me, let me say it again. I, I said, I said don't, don't sleep on hope. Don't, 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 min, don't diminish the power. Don't, don't push down the power of hope because hope helps us to gain a new perspective on what we're going through. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Not just our lives, but what you're going through right now. Because believe it or not, God is still, slow me down, Lord. God is still doing some things with you, even though you're going through. And I know I'm right about it because the, the old hymn of the church was saying like this, Sister Nettie, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and, and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest rain, but behold and lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. Why, preacher? Because all other ground yes. is sinking, sink, sink. So, so then this morning, I, I came on a sign to tell someone, don't lose hope. I don't know if you're there. If you're there with me, be bold enough to just throw your hand there. Yeah, I, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Don't, don't lose hope. Don't give up. And don't you dare walk away. Don't throw in the towel. Don't quit. The Lord, I think you said it last Sunday, my sister, the Lord is not through with you yet. And he still has to speak in your circumstances. Uh, 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 let him do hope. Change your perspective. Because Sometimes it's not what you're going through. Sometimes it's how you see what you're going through. I feel you now, Lord. Push me and I preach. I say sometimes it's not what you're going through, but it's how you view what you're going through. And hope, hope is all throughout the Bible. Uh, hope of the resurrection. 
and eternal life. 1 Corinthians 15, 15 through 19. I said it's all throughout the Bible. Hope of divine healing and health. Exodus 15 and 26 and 1 Peter 2, 24. Hope of, of, of restoration and eternal life. That's my favorite one. Anybody here need a turnaround? You need God to turn around your circumstances? I said there's hope of restoration and eternal life. And last but not least, you read it last Sunday, Sister Preacher. Can, can, I, can I take a little bit of it? Uh, a hope of a good future. Yeah. Jeremiah 29 and 11. Yeah, yeah. Hope gives us the expectation that tomorrow will be better than yeah. today. Amen. Amen. Any bold Christians here that may be going through something right now, but you're still waiting on the Lord? You're going through some suffering right now, but you're still waiting on the Lord? He's going to show up, and you know what? In your spirit, when he shows up, he's going to show up in my life. Yes. Talking about a good daddy, hell y'all. Yeah. Uh -huh. I said, so then hope, watch it, is more effective uh, when it's founded in the word and the promises of God. I, I need to make two uh, statements, uh, declarations, if you will, and then I'm going to move on. Maybe write these down, two, two statements. Uh, hope is synonymous with faith. In other words, uh, they, they share the same definitions. They're very close in definitions. The first one is hope is synonymous with faith. And in other words, they, they, they share a similar uh, definition. They're very close yeah. together. And stop telling me that you got faith and you ain't got no hope. <laughs> yeah. If you've got faith, you, you have a, an expectation that yeah. there's something. Uh, uh, okay, okay. The, the second one, the second one, in order to be truly used of God, you have to have. Y'all want to write it down? I got it here. Okay. Uh, uh, in order to be truly used of God, you have to have dot, 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 and incorporate hope. I'm going to say it again. In order to be used of God, you have to have hope, and you have to incorporate it in your life. Can we go to work now? In the text, we see a meaning between God and Joseph. And that will be the nexus or the beginning, the, the launching pad of what soon would be the savior of the world. I need you to refocus now because oftentimes we look through the eyes of Mary. We certainly look through the eyes of Jesus, but, but today let's look through the eyes of, of Joseph. Uh, okay. uh, you, you see, one day Joseph, who was soon to marry, uh, Mary, old King James says that they were spots. Uh -huh. <laughs> Is that in your yeah. Bible? Uh, but, but, but she ended up praying. Oh, let's be real. Y'all gonna help me be real? Be, be real. Be real. Be real. I, I told them in Bible study, I'm gonna tell you now, they were different people. We say you, they said thou, but they were people. And no matter what, people are people. Yeah. Uh, uh, but, but, but Joseph, being a righteous man, watch it. In other words, righteous living, uh, uh, he, he loved her. He, he didn't want to expose her to public shame. So in his thinking, he, he uh, I'm going to send her away. I'm going to divorce her, but I'm not going to make her a public example. I'm going to do it privately. Uh, no, no one needs to know. And then the Lord showed up. <laughs> uh, in a dream, the Lord made contact with Joseph through an angel and, and told him, Joseph, you can go ahead with your plans to marry. marry. The, the pregnancy, which you see now, is, is simply done by the power of of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Verse 21 in our focus verse says that Mary shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. Thank you Brother Sterling. So then there's some lessons to learn in this scripture. If y'all would pray with me and then we could go home. The first one, I'm already at my first, my first point. The first one is when you get a word from the Lord, change your perspective. Yeah. Got to step with y'all. Pray with me. Pray with me. I'm, I'm gonna make it through. I, I told you. Look at the scenario from Joseph's perspective. He and Mary had a promise that they were going to get married. And, 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 and I need to uh, help you cross over the bridge by using context. Okay. Right. Okay. This wasn't the type of foolishness 
that we go through right now, Brother right. G, okay. in 2021, uh, this wasn't nothing you see on social media or the nightly news. It was a covenant promise yeah. that yeah. they were going to become one yeah. and holy matrimony. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's talk about, uh, look at his age a little bit. The Bible really, sister, those who study the Bible really don't talk about Joseph or Mary's age. Uh, That's right. All we know is back in those days, they did get married young. Yeah. Can you agree with me? Yeah. And in fact, one scholar says it this way, by the time that you're 30, they will already have grandchildren. Uh, but, but, but we know that more than likely they were older teens, if you will, or in their right. 20s. Can you imagine yes, sir. being a young man and you look up and the woman you shown up as spouse to, she's pregnant and you have a dream and the Lord tells you in a dream that what you see came by the Holy Spirit. Okay, okay, I just want to put you in the right. I said we got to look at it from his perspective. But I like what it did. After he received the word from the Lord, he no longer worried about what people thought about. That's right, that's right. <laughs> and not only did he reject your opinions, because you know they were talking. You know they were talking. Talking about marriage. But after he received a word from the Lord, he rejected their opinions. Uh -huh. But not only that, once he received the word from the Lord, he made adjustments. Yeah. Oh, y'all better walk with me. Yeah. Preacher, what you mean adjustments? Just like the angel told him, y'all, he gave the new baby name. He said, give his name Jesus, and that's what Joseph did. Brothers and sisters, we can learn a lot from Joseph. Yes. When you get a word from the Lord, not only do you need to change your perspective, but baby, you need to change and make the adjustments. Yes. Oh, it's going to get rough now. Right now, some of us are in a place of disobedience, mm -hmm. suffering because we are not willing to change our perspective. And got the nerve to say, I'm still waiting on God to speak. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're looking for a word, I got a word for you right here. Here's your word. He already spoke. Yeah. Make these adjustments. Can you preach this morning? Uh, move towards your calling, even if you have to make an adjustment. Right. Uh, move towards your destiny in the Lord, even if you have to make an adjustment. Let them talk about you, but move. Amen. Let them share their opinion, but as long as the Lord has spoke to you, you need to move. Stop worrying about people. Thou shalt call his name Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, that's the first one. But he shall save his people from their sins. Uh, Matthew chapter 1, 25. And, and he knew her not till uh, she brought forth her firstborn son. And, and, and he called his name Jesus. Jesus. Listen, listen, Jesus literally means Savior. Yes. Well, did you hear that? We did you hear it outside working. But, but this did you hear right? He, he loved this right In the Hebrew, Jesus means Yahweh saves. <laughs> Nobody got happy on that. You don't have to make it all. It means Messiah. Uh, in a text, it's synonymous. Another big word. It's the same as Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Kevin, I don't want to stay here too long, but some of us need to understand with everything going on in these United States of America, with everything going on in your body, everything people. 
once I know that God is with me. Yes. I can go a little harder for the Lord. If they show up, they show up. Yes, if they don't, that's all right. Yes, God is with me. Yes. Somebody asked me even this morning, oh, Pastor, it seems like you preach more when the church is emptier. I said, well, it ain't empty because God is with me. Yes, yes. 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 The, the second lesson teaches us that Dignity in the name of the Lord is important. Right. It teaches us uh, that we need to glorify his name. Yes. It teaches us that we need to magnify the name of Jesus. And I don't know if you believe me or not, but we're living in a society that has lessened the name of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. And an angel was trying to tell Joseph, and I believe he's trying to give us a clarion call today. And as we march forth towards the celebration of the Christ child coming in to save the world from their sin, that we have to learn, are y'all listening to me, how to dignify his name. Yeah. Amen. And the simple fact that this is demonstrated all through scriptures. All right. Did you not realize that demons trembled at the name of Jesus? Yeah. Yeah. And brothers and sisters and a Jericho family and friends, and even if you don't get nothing underneath of the tree, please learn to dignify his name. Preacher, make this thing applicable so I can apply it right now. Okay, here we go. Uh, when we love one another, yeah. we dignify his name. Yeah. When we don't return wrong for wrong, we dignify his name. When, this, when we serve him with a whole heart, whether pastors show up, whether deacons show up, whether deacons Democrat, but if the Democrat goes to 
against the Bible, they wrong. If you were, I'm gonna preach it, I'm gonna preach it. If you were wrong against the Bible, they wrong. Oh, Lord, look at you for some Christians with some backbone. Yeah. That say, you know what? Trump wrong, call him wrong. But if Biden wrong, call him wrong. study lesson last week we studied these same verses Sterling yeah. and there was a question that came up in our Bible study lesson you, you want to hear the question it says what do we know from the text what do we know from the text right now about the rest of the story that Joseph didn't know at that time that's All a good right. question yeah. Yeah. that's a good question yeah. what, what do we know about the text because we, we have the Bible at that time Joseph is going through something, but if you flip the Bible, you know something that Joseph didn't know when Joseph decided to be obedient to Amen. The Lord. Amen. I'm going somewhere with this. Joseph didn't know the difficulty of traveling to Bethlehem with a pregnant wife. That's right. We knew if we read our Bible, but Joseph yeah. didn't know at that time. Right. Uh, 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 Joseph didn't know the threat to the baby's life by King Herod. That's right. Joseph did not know at that time when he says, Lord, I do what you tell me to do. Some of us are just right there. Lord, I serve you any time until some trouble jumped. <laughs> uh, uh, Joseph didn't know uh, a forced and extended trip of the escape to Egypt. Yeah. And watch this one. Joseph did not know how much people would whisper mm -hmm. about and mistreat Mary and Jesus. And That's Jesus. right. Amen. Preacher, where are you going with this? Don't fool yourself. Standing up for what's right can get you in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. I know this to be right myself. Raising your children right can get you into trouble. Yeah. Living out what is truly means to be a Christian. I told you already, Christian means Christ-like can get you into trouble. You see, Joseph didn't know to the extent that they would slander the name of Mary and crucify Jesus. You see, the angel told him that Christ would save the world. Yeah. But but I don't know. I don't know if you read it in the text. I didn't yeah, see it. He did not tell him how it would be. That's right. I wonder if Joseph's mind would have changed if he'd have found out the way he would have saved the world is being crucified. Oh. That little cute baby, he would, he would turn into a man and they would spit on him and they would beat him and they would call him all types of names and he would have to die on the cross. Let me say yeah. it another way. Hey. Joseph knew John 3.16. Yeah. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But Joseph didn't know about Isaiah 53 and 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised by our The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, with his stripes, we are healed. Simply came to tell somebody, if you're going to keep hope alive, you got to understand that trouble it's going to come by your doorstep every once in a while. Uh -huh. But greater is he yeah. that was in me than he that's in this world. In 1988, Reverend Jesse Jackson made a second unsuccessful run for the Democratic nomination for a president. Uh -huh. I don't know if you remember. Some of y'all not old enough to remember. Uh, he losing out to Massachusetts Governor uh, Michael Dukakis. Uh, uh -huh. uh, Jackson, however, gave another major address, another speech to the yes, Democratic please. National Convention when he was in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, he addressed the entire crowd on, on July uh, the 19th of that same year in the Omni Coliseum in Atlanta, Georgia. He, he, he gave a, do, do, any of y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah. He, he gave a, a riveting, uh, uh, groundbreaking speech. He brought them to their feet. Yeah. I got his closing right here. And I quote, wherever you are tonight, you can make it. Hold your head high, stick your chest up. Yeah. You can make it. It gets dark sometimes, but the morning comes. <laughs> Don't surrender. Uh, a suffering breeze character. Character breeze faith. In the end, faith will not disappoint. Jackson goes on and says, you must not surrender. You may feel that you're not going to get there, but you're still qualified. Uh, and, and, and you need to 
hold on. And I need to tell somebody today in Jericho Baptist Church, maybe listening to me on the internet, you need to hold on to God's unchanging hand. We must never surrender. And as I close, Pastor Harris needs to tell you that many of you have been going through struggles, and your struggles are for real. You've been beaten down by life, and sometimes you too feel like you want to quit. But let me remind you again what the psalmist says. He says, my hope is built, and nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but hold and lean on Jesus' name. But we get too fast when we read and we sing this, because we're not seeing what the psalmist is truly trying to say to us. Here's his words. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. So you got to ask the question, why? Why would you rather stand here than over here? And the answer is, he said, because all the ground, all of the doctrine, all of the opinions, all of the mindsets are sinking. Say, keep hope alive, somebody. Keep, keep hope alive, Jericho family. Stay there, stay there, see what God is going to do. Amen. And when you get a word from the Lord, stop questioning him. Yes. All you really need to know, if you're going to question, here's your question. Is this God real speak, really speaking to me? Or is this my friends? Is this my loved ones? Or am I speaking? But once you have determined yes. that God spoke it, it's time to move. Amen. Uh, number two, keep hope alive. Dignify his name. Listen, y'all. It's time out for Christians being carnal. Yeah. And, and I ain't talking just in the congregation. I'm talking from the choir stand. Watch it. The pulpit, the urchers, and anybody in between. The Lord needs us. I see some young people here. I see some young people here. Listen, listen, we play games in the church. We wonder whether or not they old enough and, and whether they, they, they know what. But God knows your heart. God needs some more warriors in the high school, in the middle school, and in the elementary school that will stand up not just for Jay-Z, but will stand up for what's right. Amen. And let the world know that I'm a Christian. Yes, I'm a Christian. Last one, I think, keep hope alive. Being in the will of God, I need to let you know, it does not eliminate trouble and struggles from coming your way. But I told you at the beginning that sometimes it's not what you're going through. Y'all remember yeah, what I said? Yeah. It's how you see what you're going, what you're going through. through. <laughs> Take your mind back and think about some of the promises you have made, God. Lord, I want to be close to you. Lord, I want to be anointed. Lord, I want to be used by you. But after we ask the question, can we now be mad with the method? I said after we have asked the question, we cannot be mad with the method. I ain't saying nothing, but sometimes allows us to get closer to God. Yeah. 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 Some of us didn't pray like we are praying right now. Mm -hmm. Some of us haven't read our Bible mm -hmm. until a trouble came. Mm -hmm. God knows that all things work together for the good. Yeah. For them who love God, for them who are called according to his purpose. Stand all over the room, stand all over the room. Keep hope alive. As we're marching to this Christmas season, there may be one that don't know this Jesus in the part of their sins. I already told you once the Lord has spoken, and I love, let me give you the example that this sticks out to me. I remember last Sunday because I watched everything. My wife will tell you, my voice said, I watch and I listen to everything. And it may not seem like, but I listen to everything. During this time right now, Last Sunday, the preacher 
opened the doors of the church and then she gave us a chance to pray. And she said, you need to move now if you hear God speaking. So I'm going to borrow a little bit of that right now. If you don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sins, you haven't fulfilled Romans 10 and 9, it says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the grave, thou shalt be saved. If that's you, your church, you're unsaved. We want you to come. Our deacons are coming. Our deacons are coming. And they're coming to receive you. As a choir is singing, I want you to make up your mind on today. Sing, y'all. Because, because. Are you here? And you haven't surrendered your life to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's your time. social media and you're not even in it. Today my charge to you is that you surrender your life to the Lord. Why preach it? Because he loves you just the way you are. This world has tricked us into thinking that God does not love us. Yes, he's a God of judgment. He wants you to do things right, but he loves you and he cares. So if you hear me, we got some time. Say what? Are you here? Are you here? Surrender your life to the Lord. Surrender your life to the Lord. Tomorrow is God promise. If you're here, you already know God has made it clear in your life that you need to surrender your life to the Lord. Sing it one more time. Sing it one more time. Yes.
of the house down. It doesn't matter, male, female, your head of your house, call everybody in. We start doing that, y'all. Call everybody in. Call them out of their rooms. Tell them to put down their cell phones and tell them like this. It's time to pray. Amen. There's some ruckus going on in your home. And it seems like everybody are fighting one another. You know, we, we get there sometimes. Maybe it's just me, but we, we keep going back. Somebody got to call on the Lord. Let's go before the Lord. Father, we love you and we honor you. Father God, I thank you for those, Lord, that have decided to follow you.